Beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, I have also read some other statements in the spirit of prophecy that either we don't like to read or that are not easily accessible for some reason or another, and I doubt you've heard any of these statements from the same author that said that the church will go through. Uh, but before I read those statements, I want to take you back to the Old Testament because, you see, we have the same problem exactly as the Israelites had. They wanted to have the Messiah come. They wanted to have uh, peace and, and happiness for all eternity just like we do. Turn to the book of Jeremiah with me, chapter 31. Jeremiah chapter 31. When Jesus Christ gave some of his very disturbing, and they were disturbing messages to the people of Israel about the temple being destroyed, about now one stone being left upon another, the Jews had some statements to fire back at him. They had some very treasured statements that they held on to with all their heart. Jeremiah 31, beginning with verse 35. Listen carefully. Thus saith the Lord, which giveth the sun for a light by day, and the ordinances of the moon and of the stars for a light by night, which divideth the sea when the waves thereof roar, the Lord of hosts is his name. So God is placing his name behind these stars and suns and set at, 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 in the sky. If those ordinances depart from before me, saith the Lord, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. Have those ordinances disappeared from the sky? Moon, stars, sun. And then Israel is promised that it will be a nation, not just a spiritual people like we believe we are. Thus saith the Lord, if heaven above can be measured and the foundations of the earth searched out beneath, I will also cast off all the seed of Israel for all that they have done, saith the Lord. Well, that hasn't happened either. And God has said, if that can be done, which it can't, I will cast off the seed of Israel for all that they have done. Promises, promises made by God. Ellen White comments on this passage. These words the Jews applied to themselves. Why not? And because God had shown them so great favor and mercy, they flattered themselves that, notwithstanding their sins and iniquity, He would still retain them as His favored people and shower especial blessings upon them. This has been the danger of the people of God in all ages, and especially is this the danger of those living near the close of time. If they, now that's we, shut their eyes, as did the Jews, to their own corruption and choose their own ways, the Lord will give them up to blindness of mind and hardness of heart that they cannot discern the things of the Spirit of God. There's Ellen White's warning. That text just doesn't apply to the Jews, but to us. But doesn't the promise sound absolute? There's no if, and, or but in there. The, the promise sounds absolute. Weren't the Jews justified in believing that the Jews would stand forever as God's chosen people based on this passage? And are we not likewise justified in believing that our ship will go through when we read that though it appears to fall, it will not fall? Or have they and we both forgotten another principle in the Bible that is not so comfortable? It's in the same book, Jeremiah chapter 18, not far away. It shouldn't have been a problem for the Jews to understand this. But, you know, we ignore the, the, the passages that are uncomfortable. Jeremiah chapter 18, verses 9 and 10. And at what instant I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to build and to plant it, if it do evil in my sight that it obey not my voice, then I will repent of the good wherewith I said I would benefit them. There it is. Any promise God ever makes to an individual or to a people concerning their relationship to Him and their future is always conditional upon the people's response or the nation's response or the church's response. Always. Go back to the book of Deuteronomy. This should not have been a problem. This should not have been a mystery for the Jews. And it shouldn't be for us either. In Deuteronomy... Moses' last message to his chosen people, the people of God. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Verse 
Verse 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee. Now the next word. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Down to verse 9. The Lord shall establish thee in holy people unto himself, as he hath sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. And then verse 13. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail, and thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath, if that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. And then it changes in verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. And then the curses follow. Look at one of them, verse 20. The Lord shall send upon thee cursing, vexation, and rebuke in all that thou settest thine hand unto for to do until thou be destroyed and until thou perish quickly because of the wickedness of thy doings whereby thou hast forsaken thee. Very plain, very direct, impossible to misunderstand. Look at verse 45. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee. Very plain, very clear, the Jews chose to ignore those statements and just take the nice ones, that we will stand forever. We are the children of Abraham. We have the promises. The prophets have prophesied. Ellen White says very succinctly in Evangelism 695, it should be remembered that the promises and the threatenings of God are alike conditional. There's the principle. Promises and threatenings, always conditional upon response. And do you know we are in just as much danger of forgetting that principle today as the Jews were in the time of Jeremiah and in the time of Christ? This message this morning is not an easy one to give. We're going into a dark tunnel. It's going to look like there's no way out. But you know, tunnels are not caves. Have you noticed that? There is light at the end of every tunnel. First of all, though, may I share with you some of those, quote, other inspired statements that are not read very often, not studied very often in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. I'll give you the references. You can check them for yourself. Testimonies, Volume 5, 217. I am filled with sadness when I think of our condition as a people. Our own course of continual backsliding has separated us from God, and yet the general opinion is that the church is flourishing and that peace and spiritual prosperity are in all her borders. The church has turned back from following Christ, her leader, and is steadily retreating toward Egypt. Testimonies to Ministers 397, the whole body is sick because of mismanagement and miscalculation. Review and Herald, July 24, 1888, some power has cut the cable and we are drifting away to sea without chart or compass. Testimonies, Volume 5, 75 and 76. You are following the same path as did ancient Israel. Your neglect to follow the light will place you in a more unfavorable position than the Jews upon whom Christ pronounced a woe. Testimonies, Volume 8, 250. Unless the church, which is now being leavened with her own backsliding, shall repent and be converted, she will eat of the fruit of her own doing until she shall abhor herself. There's a statement also I found in Review and Herald, uh, February 4, 1890. The church to whom God has entrusted the treasures of truth needs to be converted. The church needs to be converted. Testimonies, Volume 5, we're not done. 71. It pains me to say, my brethren, that your sinful neglect to walk in the light has enshrouded you in darkness. You may now be honest in not recognizing and obeying the light. The doubt you have entertained, your neglect to heed the requirements of God have blinded your perceptions so that darkness is now to you light and light is darkness. We are in that time now. 
In a letter to Butler and Haskell on December 8, 1886, Oh, what privileges are granted to us as a people. And if God spared not His people that He loved, because they refused to walk in the light, how can He spare the people whom He has blessed with the light of heaven in having opened to them the most exalted truth ever entrusted to mortal men to give to the world? Internal corruption will bring the denunciations of God upon this people as it did upon Jerusalem. My brethren, we know not what is before us. God will work with us and for us if the sins which brought His wrath upon the old world, upon Sodom and Gomorrah, and upon ancient Jerusalem do not become our crime. In Review, Review and Herald, Volume 2, page 308, what would the Savior do if He should come to us now as He did to the Jews? He would have to do a similar work. Testimonies, Volume 8, 67 and 68, Jerusalem is a representation of what the church will be if it refuses to receive and walk in the light that God has given. These are no idle tales, but truth. Testimonies, Volume 1, 608 and 609. If we imitate Israel's example of transgression and depart from God, we shall fall as surely as did they. And Testimonies, Volume 8, 127. Let a church become proud and boastful, not depending on God, not exalting His power, and that church will surely be left by the Lord to be brought down to the ground. Let a people glory in wealth, intellect, knowledge, or in anything but Christ, and they will soon be brought to confusion. Testimonies, Volume 8, 247. In the balances of the sanctuary, the Seventh-day Adventist church is to be weighed. She will be judged by the privileges and advantages she has had. If her spiritual experience does not correspond to the advantages that Christ at infinite cost has bestowed upon her, if the blessings have not qualified her to do the work entrusted on her, on her will be pronounced the sentence, found wanting. And one more. Manuscript Releases, Volume 14, 102. When a church proves unfaithful to the word of the Lord, whatever their position may be, however high and sacred their calling, the Lord can no longer work with them. Others are then chosen to bear important responsibilities. If these do not purify their lives from every wrong action, if they do not establish pure and holy principles in all their borders, then the Lord will grievously afflict and humble them, and unless they repent, will remove them from their place and make them a reproach. Well, those are some of the statements. There are more. Those are some of the statements that we're not too excited about hearing. They don't fit with what we really want and hope. 